Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi, and welcome to Postscript. I'm Lou Ann Riley, Grow Group Director, and I'm here with young adult pastor Michael Sullivan, who just delivered a message called Don't Stand Still. Today we graduated and celebrated our seniors, and what a great message for this transition that they're going to be moving into and really applies to all of us um, as we all find different transitions and you are certainly talked a lot about your transition. And so um, what other thoughts did you have on that transition today that you wanted to talk about? Well, the first thing in the 11 o'clock service, I need to clarify that Jill is going to be my wife. Apparently I said that she was going to be my husband. Uh, and I learned after the service that that runs in the family, that my mom, whenever she was going through her wedding vows, said that she, Cindy, instead of saying, I, Cindy, take thee, Mike, she said, I, thee, Mike, or I, Mike, take thee, Cindy. So runs in the family to mess these things up. So <laughs> just wanted to clarify okay, that. Okay, good. Well, now that we have that clear, um, what a great message today. And I think that being in a waiting period or be in a transition period, God can really use that and mm -hmm. He reveals a lot of things to us. Um, you talked about three today, um, learning about the character of God, looking for how He might be preparing you and then how God can reveal things in your heart. But what other ways can God use waiting times as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was talking to Dylan, our executive pastor, before I talked and we were just talking about how, with the example I gave about people waiting on their baggage uh, and the complaints that were in there, we were saying, I wonder how many of those people weren't standing still. Like how many of them would have complained if they had, instead of going and standing at the baggage claim, went and got a toy for their child or struck up a conversation with the person next to them and probably none of them. And so I think oftentimes we don't like waiting, but we don't look around and see what God has for mm -hmm. us right where we are. And so mm -hmm. Maybe it's just simply looking around your office and thinking about who is it that God might want me to share the gospel with or to invite to church or just to engage in a conversation in a small way or when you're waiting to move to another city, not to just check out, but to continue to engage with your neighbors and help them foster into community as well. So there's opportunities all around us if we just look around and, and not so much focus on the end. Like as you're standing there at baggage claim waiting for your bags, when that's your only focus, that's all you can think about. I mean, I think about for me, I'm heading to get married, you know, that's or waiting, what I'm waiting on. And if I only focus on that one day, I lose so much of the beauty mm -hmm. of the process to continue to get to know Jill, uh, to build into what is going to be our relationship. It's more than just that day. And I think so many times we focus on the one moment and forget about the process. So that's what I would encourage people to continue to focus on what opportunities are around me and focus on the process versus the actual event or whatever it is you're waiting for. That's great. And as you talked a little bit about David and things in his heart and how God was preparing him, um, just came to mind just thinking about how important prayer is mm -hmm. in the waiting. Can you speak to that just a little bit? Absolutely. And I think David is a great example of that because we know that he spent all that time in the field and he learned to hear the Lord's voice mm -hmm. over and over again through his prayer, through him calling out to God. We see that time and time again in the Psalms. He learned to know the Lord's voice and what the Lord's will was for him. So much so that I mentioned the cave. We know that Saul, the king, was chasing David, trying to kill him, and stumbled into the cave where David was. And David was a mighty warrior. Mm -hmm. He took down Goliath. And so he could have nailed him right there and, and taken the kingdom. But David listened to the voice of the Lord that said, no, that's not the way that you're going to take this. You're going to wait for my timing and wait for me to deliver you the kingdom whenever I decide that is to be. And so he knew the voice of the Lord mm -hmm. from the previous time. So especially in this season of waiting to continue to be in prayer, to ask the Lord to make it so clear the opportunity that comes to you. I think about for me, when I came to FaithBridge, I was having a lot of success at Deloitte. I was scheduled to be promoted uh, and to come here was a big step. And really I was used to hearing the voice of the Lord and, and hearing from him from studying scripture all the years previously that allowed me to know when this opportunity came, yes, this is what is next. This is lining up with his heart. And so I think, yes, prayer is huge. And just to be 
constantly in community who can speak into your life in these seasons and direct you back to the Lord. I think all of those things are huge uh, in seasons of waiting. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your message today and thank you for joining us here for Postscript. We'll see you back here next week. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org slash postscript.